Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play SimRail, the Railway Simulator. I've been trying to record this video since uh, Friday, guys. Uh, you notice I haven't been posting for a while, and there's an honest reason I've not been posting for a while. Every time I try to record this, it comes out looking like a piece of trash. Uh, leggy trash. And I don't want to promote it at looking like a leggy piece of trash. Because this game actually runs fairly well for me. And I'm surprised it runs fairly well for me. It's just that recording this game, the system doesn't like it. And that means there's something wrong with the way this game records. Uh, when you're playing the game and trying to record it. That needs to be fixed on the development end. So I'm going to be minimizing my play of the game. I still am going to try to show off things as they come out. But I'm going to be minimizing my play of this game. I'm not going to be doing a lot of casual drives in this game like I would for Train Sim uh, Classic. Looking at different routes or scenarios. Or Train Sim World bringing up different routes there too either. Because these games, those games record just fine. This game doesn't. This needs to be fixed from a promotional perspective. Because I can't really promote a game when it looks like a leggy piece of crap. I'm going to be honest about that right now. In any case, this is now my fourth or fifth attempt recording this scenario. Uh, one test did actually come out okay, but I did I had a problem with the drive, so I couldn't use it. Um, so, I've now completely closed down my Firefox, which turns out to be a memory hog, I found out. And uh, we're going to see how this runs with Firefox closed. This might be what I have to do. I might have to record this game with Firefox off, guys. We're going to try. So we're going into single player mode today. What I wanted to show you four days ago is uh, this scenario. Not that, but this one. You can see there's a number of other scenarios here. We're going to get to these in the future as well. And I do have plans I'm going to talk about on tomorrow's video, which I'm going to post however it comes out. I'm just doing a ride along, moving around the cab periodically tomorrow, but I'm not doing anything else tomorrow. So you're going to just see um, the ride along tomorrow, and that's it. And the occasional radio contact too. I think we had a little radio talk there as well. But um, today we're going to go ahead and just do a tutorial. There is going to be some movement outside the uh, train. And how the movement outside the train records is going to tell you how this is going to go. So let's take a look here and see what we have. This is the tutorial for the E4. You know I'm at level 11 by now because like I said, I've been trying to do this since... Saturday. I want to show off uh, one detail, by the way. When I go back to the menu for a second, you have to do a tutorial scenario to unlock multiplayer. It will not work if you don't. And the depot doesn't work, by the way. So don't try and go in the depot yet. Unavailable. So, and by the way, I'll show you this route quickly. There are some uh, scenarios using the uh, using the train to from Krakow as well on line 4. Or on line 8, rather. So on line 8, go into line 4. Uh, one says it's going to um, Krakow, but it actually goes to Katowice. So that's another mistake that needs to be fixed by the developers in the text. That is a train to Katowice. And I could, I could prove that by writing that scenario, but that's not the project for the day. So we're going to head into here. We're going to head this tutorial. We're going to head into this tutorial. Let's get started. Dzisiaj poprowadzisz pociąg osobowy z Zawiercia do Katowice. Na początku sprawdź łączność z dyżurnym ruchu. To enter the locomotive, approach it and click on the doors or press 1 on the keyboard. By the way, I walked around the fence. You can actually walk through the fence just to see that. So we can approach the doors. We can get in the locomotive. I'm not going to go through the whole procedure of uh, climbing in because I don't know how that's going to behave when I uh, do so. And there was a little bit of leg there. I got some leg there. But other than that little bit of leg, the kind of leg we get when I just move around like this is going to pretty much tell us what kind of scenario recording this is going to be. Just a disclaimer, it is playing relatively fine for me, just it doesn't always come out that way. Open the cover on the left side of the panel and move battery enable switch upwards. So moving into the cab puts you directly into the seat, quick shortcut into the seat. Open the cover on the left side of the panel and move battery enable switch upwards. So there's two panels, you can see that one and you can see this one. You can see the yellow light telling you what you need to do, so we're not going to be dealing with uh, battery charging source converter or... I think anything else doesn't even light up in there. But in any case, we turn that. Turn the key clockwise to activate the cabin. You heard the alarm. You have to push the alert button to turn that off. The alert button is that, uh, let me just push it again. That red one you see there. That's the alerter. Enable radio and set desired channel. I'm going to sit down as I do this. Rise the pantograph. Rise the pantograph. Repetitive commands. There you go. Wait for the voltage to appear. At this point, you'd be asked to sit in the seat, I believe. Differential relay breaker is active. 
Use differential relay breaker reset button. Enable the circuit breaker. By the way, you have to hold this down. Notice I pushed it, it didn't work. You have to hold it down. Enable converter. Wait for charging current to stabilize. Enable compressor. You can see the uh, dials moving on the left there, on those uh, ones that move up and down. Wait for a main tank to fill. Now we're just kind of waiting. I'm moving slowly so I don't jerk it too much here. options for the train brake handle there. I'm just going to use the uh, key maps that I've applied to it. Hold brake releaser button. Charge the main line. We have to hold this to release the brakes. And if you like the one in the middle, it does not complete. It actually recharges itself. So you have to hold it down all the way. Brake is active. Release it using handle on the real wall of the cabin. Very slow moving over here. This is it. Use the call button on your radio telephone to confirm the readiness of the train departure. They put the train in position one. Conductors. Move drive handle to the first position. Successively increase position of the drive handle. Shut up. You're going to find this baby stitch. You shut up. Seriously. Um, so I'm going to put the train back to number one because I don't want to uh, come in too fast. You have to hit the alerter every hour 30 to 60 seconds. Sometimes it comes up twice in 10 seconds. I think that's a bug. Um, but in any case, uh, we are coming up to the platform. We're going to be stopping here. Notice I'm trying and keeping the throttle at one. If you put the throttle at zero while you're coming to this platform, they Avoid will try to get you. driving on resistant positions. Shut up. Successively increase position of the drive handle. Shut up. I'll talk in a minute. To break. First, move shunting and drive handle to zero position. I'm just doing a nice casual break here, because I have lots of room. So we're doing a passenger stop at this time. We have 35 seconds to kill, so I can talk for a minute. Notice when I came up to the platform, we what ended up happening was I um, had left the wheel position one. If you move it to position zero, it will tell you, please disconnect, reset the conductors, connectors, whatever it says. And then it will tell you again, please increase the driver. No, I'm coming to a stop at a station, you stupid idiot. What do you want me to do, speed past it? Like, that's, the babysitting element in this tutorial is something that needs to be corrected. This is not a good thing. Because, uh, yes, it's a, it's a nice coaching thing, but it's not going to just babysit like that. Let us figure it out once we know how to move it. We have to remember. Now here it would be Close okay. line conductors move drive handle to the first position. Successively increase position of the drive handle. Now see, getting it here as we leave again, that is okay, but constantly being told as we're trying to come to a stop to keep turning the wheel to increase speed while we're trying to come to a stop is not good. So we're going to hold our speed here for a moment at uh, throttle position 1. We're going to get a 120, there it is, we're getting a 120 now. You can see connecting line there, that would take you between the two lines if needed. That is something that uh, is controlled here at Zabiurchi. 
so they can uh, move you across that line if they need to. There usually is not. I've worked this board. There usually is not a reason to go across that line. And I've never put a train across that line. The only reason you would do that is if there's a hiccup in traffic on line two, like line two is closed. So you have to send all traffic by line one. Then you've got a bit of a mess because Zaviarchi is busy enough that if you have to send traffic on line one, you're gonna have a serious problem. So that can be uh, something that winds up having to be worked out in a really, really strange fashion. There could be delays all day until the problem is resolved. So um, that's a case where it might be hard to keep things moving. But you can use it if you need to. If there is a temporary blockage, you need to put a couple trains down there, close line one for a moment. And uh, if you only have to put a few trains down, the line clears and you get things going again, you don't have a problem. You're fine. So uh, you can carry on at that point. Let's see, keep increasing this because it's low amps now. That's what I want. Is now on non-resistant position. This is appropriate position for long distance driving. You can also use the shunting handle to increase the power. Remember this message, guys. You're going to hear it again. So while we get up to speed, I just want to talk quickly about a fun experience I had in this game the other day. I took train number 41110, or 41140, for a drive in the multiplayer server one evening. And um, it turned out that uh, I had already noticed there were a couple trains coming down line 62, so I decided to have a little fun with it. That's why I got this train. I didn't record this, obviously, because was just, it was the same drive. But um, I got the train, I joined the Katavici, and I continued onwards to uh, Sosnovia Kuklufni. I already knew there was a good dispatcher because I hadn't seen any plugs at that station all night. But I wanted to see what else was happening on the line. As I joined the Katavici, I found out there was actually a blockage up the line past Beijing or past Dubrovnikska. It cleared by the time I got there, so we're not going to worry about that. But um, as I got up to Snowbiak Lufni, I was still watching the map. I saw the trains coming in, so I basically said, Oh, by the way, you got two trains coming in, and it looks like there's a higher priority train following behind. Be prepared for a possible switcheroo move. And I'm ready for my departure at designated time, 10.02, whatever and uh, I will await signal to depart. And the signal was given, and I later saw in the text box, 40140, here's your copy. So, um, yeah, you gotta love the role play that people do in this game. Uh, it really is uh, fun to uh, see things like that. It's almost like I was being treated like the line supervisor. Here's your copy, sir. <laughs> Now you notice I'm not increasing the speed completely to 120. I'll do it. I'll go up to full throttle for a second. Oh, it's not telling us now because I waited for a long time. Okay, we're not going to find out anymore. Perfect. Let's uh, lower that speed. I thought we were going to get the same message for a moment, but it looks like it was disabled on 43 for some reason on this run. This is the first time I've actually seen no message on that. So. As a note, sometimes when you get up to 43, you're going to find the same message from 28 showing up. I don't think you need that message showing up there. So it would be a good idea for the developers to check that link as well and make sure that you don't have that showing up twice. So I'm putting it down below into a resistant position again because I'm now going at a speed I'm happy with. I already know I'm not going to finish this tutorial on time because there is going to be a slowdown up ahead and I have to wait for my departure time anyway, so there's nothing I can do. We're just going to go and we're going to uh, do what we can here. There's a 40 coming up. I didn't even see it. I'm taking the brake off to just close the train down at this point because I don't want to lose all my speed. I'm going to have to go down to zero. There we go. That's what I want to see. Good enough. You know, at this point, I don't care about the warning signal penalty. Penalize me. I don't care. <laughs> I was more concerned about getting down to 40.
I kind of wish there was on the HUD a way for the 40 to be more prominent because you see the signal, but you don't catch the numbers with it. So having like a, a three kilometer warning for a signal change would be kind of nice. Uh, whether we get that or not in the future, I don't know, but it'd be nice to have a much larger warning for these speed changes so we can plan around them. Because if you assume the driver's gonna know the line, then you can assume the HUD is gonna also know the line. In this case, it was tied to a signal, so there's not much we can do, but. In this tutorial, that area will always be a 40, so you have to go 40 in this area for sure. And I don't know if that's by timetable or just um, if there is a, um, or what's going on, but you can see that 1122 is our time through Vazy LC, and it's 1122 right now. There's no way we're gonna be there on time. We can still get to Dorovic or Nixa on time, but we're not gonna get to Vazy on time. Also, if you take too long to respond to the vigilance, you get an alert saying respond to the vigilance alarm from the tutorial. At this point, if you reset the wheel to zero, you're not going to get warned anymore that you need to turn the wheel on. So you just assume that at this point now you know what you're doing. They could do this a little earlier. stress again regardless of how the quality of this video is coming out it is going through very smoothly on my computer there now there is the occasional bit of lag here and there and it's not a perfect 60 fps because i think i'm more likely to get 30 uh 30 is usually sufficient um i'm not even sure if i'm getting 30 to be honest with you i might be getting like 20 or 25 on my computer but it's going to possibly show on your screen when it comes out as being slower than it really is uh so it actually is going sufficiently fine on my computer for the gaming experience, but um, I'm wondering if there... Oh, I can go 120 again. I'm wondering if there is... Can I get that back to 1, please? Thank you. I'm wondering if there is a uh, quality settings change that I can change the quality of everything in the game, uh, in which case I might be able to get a more smooth FPS. I don't know if this can be done, and I don't think it will affect video quality, unfortunately. There's nothing that will affect video quality that I can do at this point. I've been trying. I'm on a last-ditch effort by closing Firefox completely while recording the game, which also means I don't have access to other tools if I need to alt-tab out. So I'm going to have to uh, resume my Firefox after I finish the uh, game and try to um, and see if I can uh, maintain um, and, see, and, and use all my memory on Firefox again. Right now, I've put like 50% of my computer memory on Firefox into something else. So it's basically trying to run this game, record this game now. Hopefully, it comes out cleanly. I have made a comment about uh, how the game, other game, I'm, or at least I'm making a comment with the posting of this video in the Discord server, saying that um, if I record the game, it comes out looking like a piece of crap. And um, it's not running like a piece of crap, it just comes out looking like that. So we can't really promote the game and sell the game for you, uh, developers and publisher, if the game looks like a piece of crap. Uh, it just convinces people not to buy the game. And other people recording have had similar issues. They've reported, the, they've reported this rather uh, in their videos. So, yeah, they need this needs to be fixed. The audio, the recording thing, the audio comes out fine. The video comes out choppy. So, it needs to be fixed. Uh, otherwise, rep report or promoting this game is not going to be possible. Recording this game in stream, streaming this game, is not going to be possible. And that means you're going to have limited exposure for the game and it's going to turn into a forgotten project even though it has literally the one thing the train sim drivers have wanted forever so we need to um fix this developers you need to fix this uh there are things that are more important like you know unlocking sosnobia kolu Nuvi, unlocking katavici unlocking uh deborah gornixa zapkovici which i actually had a stuck train at waiting for a signal the other day uh next to me so these are more important things, getting these dispatch stations up, because there's not enough dispatch stations for players as it is in the south end. Uh, we need to get those last few opened up for players to use. Uh, and then work the way up the rest of the line, work the way along line 62, and then eventually slowly add more lines, because we're going to need more lines to uh, have full communication across the network, uh, the way that it's set up. But for right now, um, 
I can only say that this will need to be fixed. This absolutely will need to be fixed. So we are coming up on Dobrovo Gornik to Zabkovici. It's still about seven kilometers away, so we got a long way to go still. I'm only increasing the speed slowly. I've actually run out of amps, so I'm gonna actually punch it up now. That's doing nothing, let's boost it. So if you wanna stay at uh, 75 and under, stay under 28, there you go. Now we're gonna go ahead and increase it just a little bit faster, but I'm not gonna go all the way up. I did not mean to do that, ignore that. That was my fault. I hit tab and it brought up the multiplayer window. I actually think tab should be disabled in single player mode because that just interrupts the drive and surprise you for a second. So ignore the fact that I hit the tab key there. I didn't hit the warning signal again. I'm going to keep the H key handy right now because I've, I've got my horn mapped to H. I don't remember if that's default or if I set that. Uh, I actually think it's default because I want to set it to the space bar. But there's something else on the space bar. I have to sort out these key commands later when I actually start driving this more. Um, when I put more time into the actual driving. enough. Let me hit there. We're stopping at 100. We got 100 coming up later. If it increases on its own, I'll let it, but uh, by the way, you can hide your display in this mode as well. Single player mode, you don't have to keep the display up. You can hide that information. It's just like the same function as multiplayer mode. Exactly the same. In fact, you notice the train number 40665? This is the exact train you would drive in the uh, multiplayer mode. The exact same drive. They just made the scenario tutorial about that, and uh, they gave you the stop at end points. So you don't actually... Oh, I didn't even plan for that. I pushed the wrong button. Uh, so you don't even uh, have... I think it's the same timetable and everything. The only difference is you don't continue past Katabichi into the netherworld, and um, you don't come in from the north. Uh, entering Zap Mirchi. You just have your start and end points and that's it. So you start at a specified start and end point. But it's the same timetable generally. So that's, uh, I don't know how you see the US. You think that was Crucian, Crucian Brood or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, how it's spelled even right now to be honest with you so I couldn't rem remember what it said perfectly because of that but I know that uh, the C's, the ZCZ sounds kind of weird so it's like Krushen Root or something like that again I'm wrong probably but so I've loaded the throttle because I'm starting to get a little faster than I want to be here I know there's going to be a 100 later on and I don't want to you know what? Screw it. I don't want to increase too much speed, but as long as I keep minimal throttle applied, I think I'm going to be doing that. So let's take it down to 37 and see if that lets it drop. 37 amps. I now have less amps than I have throttle positions. Something you don't say with every train. So yeah, I'm late because I'm being casual. It's a tutorial, you're allowed to be casual. Don't worry about it. Now I get it for single player mode, but there's something else I wanna throw out in multiplayer mode for the developers. If you're driving a train in multiplayer mode and a dispatcher holds you up because there's something going on up ahead, that's a dispatcher decision. You can't penalize a player for being late at a checkpoint because something could be happening that is beyond their control and punishing them for being late is like saying uh, that I didn't eat my meal at McDonald's fast enough when it was not served to me in a timely fashion. So come on, let's just be honest here. You, 
there's the 100 C. Why is my, why am I not connecting my, uh, there it is. Okay, my uh, connection didn't want to happen there. I don't know if that was a bug or if I did something wrong, but it should have connected. So now I'm way under 100. This is why I didn't want to go over 100 to start with, see? The brake just suddenly moved itself all the way to the emergency position. I had to quickly move it back out before it went there. So now we're going to have to get up to 100 again. A little bit annoying. So Zabkovici is the uh, change point. And we are going to be uh, continuing at this point to the next couple of stations before Dabrobo Gronixka. Watch in the top right. You're going to see that it says drive through Dabrobo Gronixka Golanog. So we're going to be going through Golanog next. A little thing, when you have a number of stations that start with the same city name, they're often known by just the last part of the name. So this is basically going to be Golanog Station that we have as a waypoint. Uh, there's another one that starts with a K coming up. Um, I don't think it shows up as a waypoint, so we're going to be seeing that one, I think, next. And there's a 120 again, so that 100 is limited. A little annoying, but... It happens on every railroad. You have those spots that are suddenly lower for no reason, then you have to bring them back up. That's what you do. And I've driven this now several times, and I don't think I'm ever going to remember. because Just because the UI isn't designed to help you remember. The UI does not help you remember. So it's not going to be easy to remember where those uh, points are unless you drive this over and over and over, and you have a way to memorize that. Uh, not everyone is going to memorize that. So you're... It might, this game might lose a few people based on that, but um, very often, since you can ride along with the bot anyway, you can enjoy the drive even if you don't want to actually drive yourself and remember the speed limits yourself. So you can still enjoy the drive and be on time and everything. Not in this mode, because there is no, um, if I were to go to escape in this mode, you can see you can't activate any bot here. In the multiplayer, there's actually an activate bot setting you can use. So we're not gonna be doing that here, obviously. And, oh, shut up. Shut up about warning signals. Maybe you should give us an alert that we need to sound a warning signal. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? When I'm recording, you're going to see I miss a lot of warning signals. And notice that, the alerter, 10 seconds. You have to hit the alerter again. You can't get a break from it. One higher speed limit coming up. I'm under that right now, so I'm going to move this down. Now, Brova Gronixka is now three kilometers away. That is our next stop. We need to be prepared to slow down about a kilometer to go. Shut up! Shut up already. I threw, threw a warning signal. Give me the points. It, the points don't do anything. I don't know if you even see a total score at the end of the day showing you what your score is. So it really means nothing. I really don't give a crap about the points. I honestly don't. Even less than in Train Sim Classic because you don't have a scenario achievement that shows you, hey, you got a thousand points. Big deal. Let's not speed for now because we have that coming up. Oh, shut it. Oh, shut it. <laughs> So I'm starting to break now because I know the station's coming up. We have Dubrova Gornixa. I just did it, you dumbass! Pardon the language, guys. <laughs> so 
So I release the brakes for a moment because I'm coming into the station now. For the developers, I'm going to give you an idea. Instead of penalizing us for not sounding the horn, give us points for actually sounding the horn. That's a better way to do it. Again, not that I really care, but... So I've got a 2% break. This is perfectly fine. I'm just coasting to a stop here. i got lots of room. Use the call button on your radio telephone to confirm the readiness of the train dispatcher. The call button for the radio is down here. Dobrowa Gruncza do 40665. Będzie wyjazd? Now I understand the radio being in Polish. Let's try that again. I understand the radio being in Polish. At least the text is in English and we can read it. It would be a little more engaging. We're on schedule, by the way. It would be a little more engaging for us if the text was, if the audio was also in English, but at the same time, it is a Polish rail network. I certainly understand having the audio be in Polish. Uh, it does add to the immersion to have that in Polish. Now, in multiplayer, you're going to obviously have English or German or whatever it is that you're in the multiplayer server for. But uh, in the scenarios, I understand completely. So I'm not going to fault that. Perfectly fine. And I'm sure there are a lot of players that agree with me on that. And I'm sure there are a lot that don't. You can't please everyone. You can't please everyone. I can see both sides to the argument, to be honest with you. See, notice I'm not taking off up to 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, you also notice I'm not going beyond to 40 kilometers per hour. The substitute signal represents a 20 kilometer per hour speed limit. I think this is a bug in the display in the upper right underneath the uh, next drive through point. I think this is a bug because uh, it should be uh, showing 20 there. And you can see indeed that it is 20. So uh, we do have to go at 20. I'm going to say again, developers, please allow disabling the driver vigilance system. I don't know if it can currently be done. I will ask around. But if it is not done, we need to have it able to be disabled. So, um, like I can play a Trains in Classic, I can disable all those vigilance systems. I can just enjoy the drive, because when I'm doing a scenario and recording it like this, I don't want to have to deal with pushing all those buttons. I want to just show you the drive, concentrate on what I need to concentrate on for the purpose of this scenario, call it a day. Uh, but instead, I have to go looking for the vigilance system. I have to deal with horn pressing alerts. Uh, and yes, you have to press the horn normally on the railway, I get it. But um, I've never been penalized for not pushing the horn before. Uh, I think there's only one route I've seen in Train Sim Classic that actually does this to date. And that is in the uh, racetrack in Chicago, but uh, to Aurora. But other than that, I've never seen punishments for not using the horn. So this is a very unusual thing. But again, the points don't matter. I don't care. I don't see any use for the points yet. Maybe there will be someday. Right now there isn't. And 10 points for a horn, I don't really care. Especially when you're going to penalize me for being late for under for reasons out of my control anyway. I really don't care about the horn. You're penalizing me a lot more already. <laughs> you get your experience points and you go. That's all that matters. There's no, there's no actual scoring mechanism. When I loaded in the scenario, I already played it twice. You didn't see anything. There was no indication of previous scores, of a best score. You just... It's just experience points. That's it. You lose experience points apparently while you drive. I don't get it, but I don't know if you can actually have negative experience points and lose levels. Uh, I assume zero is the minimum score for scenario. So if you have a negative score, you just get a zero, which would be correct. That makes sense. I saw the sign that time, so I hit the horn. If you're going fast, it's harder to see those uh, signs. But in this case, you are so far from the crossing that blowing the horn there makes absolutely no sense. 
at this speed. It makes absolutely no sense to blow the horn at this speed. Because it's going to take us a whole minute to get there, and the cars are like... Sorry, I fell asleep. So VMAX in 750 meters. Coincidentally, our drive through is Beijing Savera, which is the station I thought we had earlier. So it was actually a different one. Now I know there's one that started with a W that I didn't call out. Uh, so that was further back. Unless you live here and you go through this, these areas all the time, you wouldn't know all the names off the top of your head. They're not names that just roll trippingly off the tongue. It's also not like I go to the Portsmouth direct line and say, okay, here's Portsmouth Harbor, here's Portsmouth the South Sea, here's Fratton, here's uh, Havant, here's uh, like here's all these places along the way. Um, ben, was it Benhampton? I don't know. There's another one there that starts with a B. I think it's Benhampton or something like that. Uh, so, and then you get along the line, you get towards Waterloo, you can just name stations if, you're, if you've been through enough times. But, like, they roll trippingly off the tongue if English is your, form, is your common language. But Polish is not my common language. These names do not roll trippingly off the tongue. I know the few in the south end I need to know because I dispatch down there all the time. But I have not dispatched in the middle, and I have no, reason to no way or reason to remember those names yet. So, for that reason, I'm not too concerned. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to remember those names over time, and when I do... You're going to hear it in the commentary. I'm going to remember those names. I'm going to have an English way to say those names. And so be it. So this is Severa. One thing that would help from a uh, from the standpoint of remembering all the names as well is make every single station a waypoint. Every single station being a waypoint allows us from a commentary perspective to look in the top right and say, oh, this is a station that's coming up. Um... The Line 62 drive, which I have already recorded, and I'm going to show you tomorrow, uh, and I've actually talked about things I did in this video, ironically enough, uh, which I may or may not have done, um, you're going to find that, uh, A, it might be a little bit laggy, just like, uh, just because of the uh, fact that I had Firefox open when I recorded that, so it might be a little laggy, I apologize in advance, but it is mostly in cab, I'm just doing the drive, so you're going to get what you get. It's an hour and... 40 minutes, I think. So you're going to get what you're going to get. I can't control that. So um, enjoy it for what it is. There's a 110 limit. Enjoy it for what it is. That's all I can really say. Um, I'm not Because I know that I can't record this game cleanly, and I'm going to see how this tutorial comes out. If it comes out really clean, I may just have to close Firefox while I do recording. But um, if this game... I uh, cannot record cleanly, even with my Firefox closed. I'm going to have to minimize my recording to uh, just showing off new features. That's the best I can do. Uh, until they fix the quality of the recording, and I will be able to tell when I review those videos. And when that happens, I will show you a lot more from this game. So, keep an eye out for now for recordings on Train Sim Classic, Train Sim World. I'm going to be focusing on those. Since I can show them off without issue, there is lag in the game. Whatever I see as lag, you're going to see in those games. Uh, and that's just a case of PC performance. That shows you my PC performance. But until the um, recording issues in this game are resolved, it just does a disservice to show off this game. So I'm just saying it like it is. I'm going to see how this comes out. I may change my mind. I may be able to do another couple single player scenarios uh, to show off more of the line before we get into the point where I have to abandon it for a while. I do want to show off some multiplayer drives when I become a more proficient driver on the various trains, but um, and on the route itself. And I can show off different things that happen in multiplayer because those are cool. Seeing the different things happening is really cool. Getting on the radio and saying to, to uh, train dispatchers, "Hey, this is happening, fix it." Uh, that's really cool. In fact, four four one four four one one four zero, the one where I basically had a coffee brought out to me uh, about. 750 meters away from the station house where there is even a coffee maker. Huh? Okay. Maybe in a back room. But um, even there, even in that drive, uh, I was driving along. I got to Dobrova Gornik's uh, Zapkovici the other day. And I had a red signal. So I came to a stop. I basically said to myself, what's going on here? So I walked out of my train. I'd already seen a green signal. So I went over to the green signal to investigate. Yes, it was green. I took a good look at the signal. It was definitely green. It definitely had a flashing white light. 
and I took a look and there was a train on the track that I had passed on the way in. Let's come to a stop. I had come to a stop. I was, um, observed this train and I realized that this train wasn't moving. So I had to get this train moving. I realized that it probably just was not responding to the signal. The train was fine, it just wasn't responding to the signal. So I got a, I summoned a player uh, from Discord. We got the train moving and that was that. Nothing else to report. I stopped traffic by reporting to the dispatcher, which is what you're supposed to do, that there's a hold up. Uh, I got traffic stopped, so the Grover Gunnarsko itself was in control at that point of the situation. I gave them control. They were just moving up the line that there was a hold up. Uh, when I was moving again, I reported back. So as soon as it cleared up, I reported back, and uh, they were able to keep traffic moving. I only had two trains behind me. There was no hold up, and everything was fine. Oh, I thought I wasn't moving, but I am moving. Oh, the reason I'm moving is not because of my power. There we go. There we go. Well done, behind schedule, you dummy. What do you expect? You put me on a timetable that I can't accomplish right now. Of course I'm going to be behind schedule. See, you can't penalize players for being late if you're going to make them drive at 20 kilometers per hour. You cannot penalize players for being late. The scoring system means absolutely nothing. The scoring system needs, needs to be reconfigured. It means absolutely nothing. Crap all. And I'm not saying this to be angry, even if I sound angry. Um, I just want to... It, the, the point of us playing this game really is to say, you know what? These things could be improved. These things could be changed. This scenario scoring is crap. Because the same thing applies to multiplayer mode. And if you're... If there's an accident up ahead, you're going to be 40 minutes late. You're going to get a base penalty score, and that's what you're going to get. Why? Oh, shut up. Like, get rid of these point systems. I don't know what they're going to unlock, but I don't see any reason for it. There's nothing that it unlocks right now. Maybe there'll be achievements for reaching level 100 and so on, so be it. But we don't need to know what kind of points we're getting. Just let us drive. Just let us drive. If you're going to have a point system where you eventually show the point score in a scenario uh, and only tie it to scenarios, do not tie it to multiplayer mode. Just have multiplayer driving quietly sum up experience points for kilometers driven. And that's all you need to do. Um, but for single player scenarios, if you're going to have the scoring system, uh, base, it around, base the timetable around what is possible. So if you're going to be driving at 20 kilometers per hour, your timetable should account for the fact that you're going to be 10 minutes late. If your timetable does not account for the fact that you're going to be 10, minute late, 10 minutes late for your full score, then you're not doing a proper scenario scoring. This is something I point out in Train Sim Classic scenarios all the time. If you're one minute late, but you have to go at a slow speed to get there and you can't be on time, you need to be able to get your full points. Like, that's how it works. And there they do keep track of your scores. They don't mean anything, but they do keep track of your scores. And honestly, I think the scoring system in all these games really needs to be abolished. There's no reason for it. See? I'm blowing the horn now, but it doesn't matter. There's too much to concentrate on. Blowing the horn on time is the least of my concerns right now in this scenario. In a real life train, it'd be easier to see those signs coming. In this situation, it's not as easy. I think there's a, yeah, there's a 40 coming up. I noticed we had a one kilometer warning for this 40. We can get it down in time, but it's not a lot of time. We need, I don't think there's a way for signals to give extra warning, but having additional knowledge that we could be getting a slow signal would be helpful. Because if someone went all the way up to 110, they're screeching the brakes. I'm coasting because I expected it. I expected it at this point. I'm down to a 90 now, by the way, but that doesn't mean anything because there's a 40 signal coming up. Now, somewhere along here, we're going to be coming up to Sosnovia Kuklutvi, 
Uh, we might have already passed the old station building, which might be well behind us now. I'll put a tooltip if I remember to show where it is. The reason for the 40, by the way, and this is a 40 this time. The reason for the 40 is because we're going to be moving to a different platform. We're going to move to platform number one. So we're going to see platform number two as we uh, approach platform number one. We're not going to be um, stopping right away, but we are going to be worrying about coming to a stop along that line. This is the old station building. This is it. You can actually walk through that building. It is not fully modeled. I assume that will be fixed uh, for those who decide to wander out here, but for now you can stop the train, hop out, and wander through the building, and there's nothing there. You just go inside the building and you uh, see a patch of dirt there. That's what it is. So it is there. I see an old track here that appears to be closed. In fact, you see one going off there into the grass. So some of the tracks are overgrown. They still show up on the Sosnovia Kukufli board. And one day in multiplayer, I'm going to send a player through track 8 just to see what happens. But, um, yeah, the um, it's a grass line. I just want to give the experience to someone to avoid through that line. It would be funny. While we're stopped at the platform, just because I'm already late, I'm going to try and show you something else around the area as well, but I have to be very careful not to move too fast, because otherwise, again, I'll cause you some movement lag, and it causes me the same problem, so. And that is irrespective of uh, recording. Like, I've, I did close Firefox. That dropped about 50% of my memory right there. Firefox is a memory resource hog, I found out, so... Um, I might have to use Google in order to run certain things here and just close Firefox when I'm playing this and recording this game. We'll see how this comes out, like I said, I'll decide based on this recording what I do. This is Platform 2. Now we're coming up on Platform 1, and like I said, there are tracks over here. But they go into grass. So one day I'm just going to put someone along line 6 just for shiggles. But uh, until the time comes that I do that, uh, it's going to require a substitute signal or something along that lines to do it. Uh, after I do that, I can set as many trains through as I want during a session. But it's not something I'm going to do because I would have to send trains via platform 1, which is the wrong platform, for many of the trains. So it's not something I'm going to be doing. It's going to be something I do for a freight train at most and really nothing else. All right, we have arrived. The signal has cleared. We're going to be going 40 up ahead. The reason for that is we have to get back to line number one. We are going to be doing that. Let's try to do this part on time, shall we? At least as best as we can. And notice that, minus 105 points because we're behind schedule. Shut up. Just shut up. We were already going to be five minutes behind anyway, even if we made up time. Just shut up. Yeah, horn blowers are gonna have fun in this game. You just have to see what the signs are for the right horn blowing. <laughs> That's our dispatch building. Thank you for line one clearance, sir. Have a good day. Hey, where's my coffee? I caught it, but I still got a one point speed limit violation. Again, I don't care. I'm just gonna do follow the rules and try not to speed too much. Max, let's go. 
Let's not go. Now let's go. Now this time I got plus 39 points for driving through checkpoint late. Did I actually gain time on that checkpoint? Is that why I got plus points? Do you gain plus points for going through a checkpoint faster than a previous checkpoint? I didn't think that was a horn, but I want to do it anyway. So we're moving up to our 75 kilometer per hour territory of a throttle here. Nice little lake area over there to the uh, left you can see. I'll let you when you're playing and you have your ability to see it better than I can show you on video. I'll let you uh, take a look at that as you drive by. It is a nice little water area there. The lines from Mistovici are going to be joining us. That is line 138 from Mistovici coming in. You can see a building over there. I believe it's uh, somewhere near the line. So even though 70 is the limit coming up, it's going to eventually drop to a 40 with the signal as well. Uh, now I'm only getting 25 points for driving through the checkpoint late. Okay, we'll check the graph, the uh, list at the end and see what happens with that. But in any case, um, yeah, we know a 40 is going to be coming up. At least I know because the signal is going to drop us to 40 at the station. This is a known feature of Katabichi. Uh 70 and 90 are coming up as well. We haven't seen really any trains along this drive. In multiplayer mode, there would be a lot more trains. It would be a lot more engaging. Again, this is a tutorial, big deal. Vippy Skippy. could go 100 for quite a while here as you can see and uh, if I was in multiplayer mode I wouldn't want to hold up trains so I'd be doing that uh, but in this tutorial I want to make sure I also give you a good uh, frame rate experience so we'll see what happens here Seventy, because I know that speed limit is coming up. Katowice is about a mile and a half beyond, or a kilometer and a half beyond that. There we go, square jar again. So we're traveling along with line one thirty-eight. We have been since the previous station. We're now coming up to Katowice Zavodsky. Katowice Zavodsky can route traffic on the line 138 to Katowice. That traffic will still get to Katowice. It does not put you off track. Shut up. It doesn't put you off track. So you can still be routing into a proper platform at Katowice from line 138. 
if a Katabishi is a Bloodsea player is looking at the actual map as Simreal.fr and sees that two or three platforms at the top are plugged, they may want to actually put a train down 138 just to see if they can direct it to a lower platform without too many issues. But at the same time, they anyone paying attention would be able to know if there is traffic plugged up there, stop sending traffic and try to get someone to solve what's going on at the station before you send any more traffic. So um, that way eastbound traffic continues to flow and they can still passage eastbound traffic. All they have to do is queue up trains in the area entering the station. It becomes like a mosh pit of trains. It's break time. Time to take breaks off. That leg was uh, on my screen. You saw a little bit of leg there that I saw as well. It wasn't too bad, so I'm going to leave it in. But I normally, if I was doing a ride long, I would try to cut out that kind of leg when I'm not actually talking. So I'm not going to worry about it here. Every game does have some loading leg. It is to be expected. Uh, no matter how good your computer is and how good your uh, rig is. Wait, that's the same thing. No matter how good your rig is and how good your graphic quality settings are or how low they could be, you're always going to expect some computer lag. In any game, it always happens. So that was just one of those cases where I expected a lag as we came into Katabichi. Because Katabichi has a lot of stuff to load. Warsaw has even more to load. The graphics need to be heavily optimized in Warsaw. There was more lag right there you just saw. But yeah, Warsaw has even more leg, so uh, yeah, be prepared for leg all across the route. It is going to happen. Even on the high speed line, you're loading all those trees, it causes leg. And I have lots of memory, it shouldn't be a problem. So, it's just assets not completely optimized yet. They need to bake longer. Bake. Bake, my friend. Mmm, bake. This counts for us as a green signal. We now have a red signal up ahead. We have a 70, by the way. By this point, I'm already going 40, and I'm already 500 meters, 600 meters from my stop. So I'm just gonna keep going at 40 and 35, and other low speeds that are to be enjoyable. I believe this is kind of Ichi Control Tower. I could be mistaken. I don't see a door, so it could be a water tower. I don't know. I shouldn't be breaking yet. I want to look at the sign, look at the blue sign as you pass by. I don't know if it actually shows information. It doesn't. But I actually have seen in multiplayer mode, some of those signs do show a train coming in. It actually is neat that it does that. It does indicate where the train is stopping sometimes. I do like that feature. I do like it. We've stopped. That's the end of the scenario. So I took 56 minutes to drive that. Hopefully uh, you came along for the entire ride. And uh, we drove 44 kilometers, a lot of it at uh, 20 kilometers and 40 kilometers per hour, unfortunately. So there is a little bit of slowness here and there. And I was late to start with because I was being casual. It is a tutorial. Uh, in, uh, 
online I would be a little more quick because there's more traffic around. But in this case, I was 11 minutes late at Katowice. Again, I was driving in a 40 area, so I was going to be late. Again, you would have lost time here, I think. You might you might be able to maintain even time if you were at speed limit. I don't know. Or if you were speeding, you would definitely be on time. But um, I don't know if you would actually be able to do uh, the Katowice stop on time at the end. I don't think it's possible, but I could be wrong. I don't think it's possible. Someone will prove me wrong, though, uh, and you are welcome to do so. Uh, in the meantime, though, have a wonderful day, evening, or night. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. You are going to see a Line 62 drive tomorrow. I have it recorded. I'm giving it to you no matter what the quality is. Uh, I want to give you a nice sunrise drive, so you're going to get that tomorrow. So I'll see, see you for that tomorrow, and we'll be back to Train Sim Classic on Friday, looking at the M3 on the Long Island Railroad. So uh, feel free to pop in for that as well. I have three scenarios for that, and then we're going to go and do something else. I haven't decided what is going to be next yet. It depends on what releases in train in um, this game over the next week. I may come back to this game and show off new features or a new dispatching platform uh, if I can get into it. But uh, other than that, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the following week yet. I do have some stuff for it. I do have backup material if I need it in case I get tied up with stuff. So uh, we are going to uh, see what happens here. But in the meantime, I'll see you next time tomorrow for Line 62. See you next time. I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.